Good evening. Good evening. And the Lord be with you. This, the Feast of St. Luke, transferred from this coming Friday, uh, the 18th. Uh, the order of service is Divine Service, setting three, found on page 184. And we begin with our opening hymn, By All Your Saints in Warfare, Lutheran Service Book 518, stanzas 126 and 3. Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night, to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad with your work. At the works of your hands I sing for joy. How great are your works, O Lord! Your thoughts are very deep. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee. We glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, Art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, your blessed Son called Luke the physician to be an evangelist and physician of the soul. Grant that the healing medicine of the gospel and the sacraments may put to flight the diseases of our souls, and, with, and that with willing hearts we may ever love and serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament for the Feast of St. Luke the Evangelist is written in the prophet Isaiah, the 35th chapter. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. In the haunt of jackals, where they lie down, the grass shall become reeds and rushes, and a highway shall be there, and it shall be called the, the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. It shall belong to those who walk on the way. Even if they are fools, they shall not go astray. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The epistle is written in St. Paul's second letter to Timothy, the fourth chapter. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Do your, do your best to come to me soon. For Demas, in love with this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. 
Crescens has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Luke alone is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is very useful to me for ministry. Tychicus I have sent to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas, also the books, and above all, the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me great harm. The Lord will repay him according to his deeds. Beware of him yourself, for he is strongly opposed. He, for he strongly opposed our message. At my first defense, no one came to stand by me, but all deserted me. May it not be charged against them. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me, so that through me the message might, might be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil, every evil deed, and bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to go. And he said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I am sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide, for the laborer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they receive you, Eat what is set before you, heal the sick in it, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, and the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Luke is believed to be one of the 72 disciples whom Jesus sent out two by two to the towns and places where he was about to go. That is why the church has Luke 10 for the gospel, for his feast day. Luke was also, by trade, a physician of the body. But he was also a historian. A historian par excellence. Because he was not one of the twelve apostles. He wasn't present for all the events, the big events. And yet, his gospel contains many of those things. He could still record them. Because he sought out and interviewed those who were there. For example, no one but Mary and Joseph would have known about what happened at the Annunciation. And then the birth of Jesus. Since Joseph was dead when Luke became a follower of Jesus, it it means that Luke interviewed Mary, eyewitness, and the one who experienced it all. She told him what happened. Now this work of recording the accounts of Jesus' life from those who were eyewitnesses by no means means that Luke's words are in any way less less than the word of God. The Holy Spirit was still very active as he brought to remembrance everything that took place and that was said, took place and that was said about Jesus and by him. As Lutherans, we believe what God does through what he has said and recorded for us in his word, the word of God, the Bible, specifically speaking. It is the Bible that reveals to us that God works not only through direct revelation and action, but also through means, through instruments of his creating and sustaining. One of which is men, men interviewing eyewitnesses and then writing it all down for the sake of its preservation and its dissemination. The goal of the word of God, the Bible, is that the truth of the gospel would be preserved and proclaimed from generation to generation. As the Holy Spirit inspired its writing, he directed men like Luke to write only what is true. So first and foremost, the Bible is history. What happened? And history is important. As the saying goes, those who do not learn history are bound to repeat it. But also, because the Bible is history, it is anchored in reality. It is not a fantasy. Adam and Eve truly existed. The global flood washed the slate clean. The Red Sea was divided and Israel walked over on dry ground. Jericho's walls fell at a blast of a horn and the cry of the people. Jonah was actually swallowed by a fish and thrown up three days later. The Word of God, the Son of God, entered time and took on flesh and blood and was born of the Virgin Mary. And then Jesus, in history, went to the cross. He went for us men and for our salvation. Luke's work, along with everyone else sent out to preach the gospel, can only be, that work can only be done as long as what they speak is the truth, that it is history. The reason that what they say can bring peace to those who hear it is because it is anchored in what God has done in time. It is based on the historical events recorded in the Bible. For true and lasting peace to be had, the truth of God's, God's work in time must be heard and believed. And that truth cannot be myth or a moral story. Because we, who are in time, who are in space, are not myth. We are not living in a fantasy. We are living in reality, in history, in time. Until the final day, the devil will do whatever he can to insert any doubt he can into our reality, into the historicity of the Bible and this world and God's word. By doing this, he is intent on unraveling our confidence 
in the truth. Did God really say is primed by did God really do it at all? When those sent are met with unbelief, it is because they, those who do not believe, they reject the truth, the truth of God's word. What God did and said is, in, even in part, found not truth, trustworthy. And instead, whatever they think and or experience is what shapes their reality, what they feel, what they think, what they reason. That is their truth. In Luke's case, that meant that the life as a Jew under the law was more important than having the God who, was, who has fulfilled that law for them. The gospel, the gospel of peace, which is dependent not on what they did, but on what God has done for them from the beginning, and which he has, at which he has had recorded for them in the Bible, is rejected. It is more important for them that one's own salvation, one's own God, be there and what they decide it is. This can happen even when one ignores the Creator, the one who is telling them these things. It can happen even when we ignore the Creator of the law and we try to strong-arm Him into telling Him how He is going to have His law kept which happens in the case of the Jews, to not have any room for Jesus. They were going to do it themselves. They were going to tell God how his law was kept. Now talk about being a fool. The created, telling the creator how things will be done. As preposterous as all that sounds, it is precisely what we do when we sin and then hold on to that sin, keeping it away from Jesus and the forgiveness he has purchased on the cross. When we are in turmoil of soul, when we are found to have no peace, it is because we would not receive what we need. Not because it's not given to us, but because we refuse it. We are given precisely what we need for peace, yet all too often we choose another foolish way. We, in a sad and pathetic attempt, try to atone for our own sins by our own reason and senses. Without water, we try to clean our filthy hands with our same filthy hands. Our sins only end up getting rubbed in further and become harder to remove. Sin gives birth to more and greater sin which in turn moves peace farther and farther away to the troubled conscience. And then despair sets in. Despair and hopelessness is our only companion then. That will not do. This night and every time the Word of God, the Bible, is proclaimed, every time the gospel of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins is preached, what we need is delivered. Here in time, here in this history. Peace is proclaimed. Believe it. Receive it. For no matter how ingrained the sin, no matter how long you've tried to wash your own hands, no matter how far into the darkness we find ourselves today, the sent ones of Jesus, with the historic true and real work and word of Jesus, is proclaimed to you. Jesus is given to you. What is impossible for us in any way to accomplish, that holy law, is entirely done by the light of the Word. The light who shines in our darkness, who keeps that law perfectly in our place. And then he guides our feet on, into the way of peace. His way, his truth, and his life. What Jesus has done is true, and it is for you, for us. Whatever we have done is forgiven by his sacred divine blood. All that we owe because of our grave transgressions is paid for in full by Jesus and him alone. We don't help. 
Whatever sin that blackens our hands and hearts is washed away by Him with holy water in our baptism. A baptism we remember each and every day as the words of Jesus of what He has done is preached to us by those who are sent. In remembering those holy waters and that baptism, the ratty rags of death are now replaced with the holy robes of righteousness. A righteousness that is not our own, but that is made ours. What is now seen by our Heavenly Father is not a sinner, but a saint, forgiven and covered in Jesus' righteousness, the one who does it for us. This is what makes for peace, is that we look not at ourselves, but we hear and see him who lived and acted in history for us. When we have it and believe it, we have the perfect love, the one who drives out all fear. We have everything in him, in Jesus. And if we have him, worry, worrying about losing anything, is removed. But we already have everything. We don't need to act as if we will lose out on something if we don't help or if we don't do it ourselves. No, in faith, having heard the word, we let Jesus do it for us, just as he always has done it for us from the very beginning. We let him make us whole, he chooses us, and he gives us himself. We hear his word of truth and find it sufficient. Sufficient, right where he has placed us, in our given stations, in our own lives. God gives us his perfect word as a whole, law and gospel. And he gives it so that we might have peace, that we might have Jesus. When we divide the truth into parts, we lose the truth. So we get it whole. We need the whole counsel of God, just as God has given it to us in the Bible. No part is greater than another, because it is all about Jesus. And it is Jesus for you. So hear him. Hear him from those who have been sent, including St. Luke. Receive him and have peace, have forgiveness, have life and salvation here, now, and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. We stand for prayer. Now the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. Let us pray. By the working of your Holy Spirit, keep us attentive to all the teachings of your word, enlighten our minds, control light for our past, that neither the pleasures nor the honors nor the pains of this life May turn away our thoughts from the fullness of life that is found only in you. Enable us in sincerity of heart to follow you, the only true God. By your holy word, enlighten all who are in error, doubt, or temptation with the sure and certain knowledge of your truth, that all who live in sin may be led to repentance. Show mercy and grace to all those suffering any distress, to those who are sick or hospitalized, and to those facing death. Let them know the sure comfort of your holy word. 
We commit ourselves and all for whom we pray to your fatherly care and benediction. Be gracious to us and defend us by your power. Direct us by your Spirit that we may daily grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Savior until we shall stand before you in the joy of everlasting glory. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. For you have mightily governed and protected your holy church, in which the blessed apostles and evangelists proclaimed your divine and saving gospel. Therefore, with patriarchs and prophets, apostles and evangelists, with your servant, St. Luke, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Amen. Body of Christ, give us peace. Body of Christ, give us peace. The body of Christ, give us peace. The body of Christ, give us peace. 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 Body of Christ. Now the 
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith, throughout this life and the life to come. We pray from God's peace, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and it will shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy endures forever. Let us pray. O oh, God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Blessed we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Amen.
tail's really big.